Hi guys, my name is Noam. I'm going to show you how to do AWS deployment CI BCD. Um, this is my email, this is my LinkedIn account. Um, I'm using on this video Ansible, Jenkins, Bash, Git, and Python. Uh, I will generate a new code. After that, uh, it will be auto committed to the Jenkins. The Jenkins will fire up a new, a, a, a new job with Python and some Bash script. Uh, that in the end we will have a new instance that run that have uh, HTTPD some website that all the content of the website is my last git hash so when I will do another commit you will see that the git hash is changing and then in the end of that we will we will see how it's work I will talk about what is tagging and how can I illuminate the old instance from the new instance so let's begin um, this is my repo I'm going to do git add git commit oops it's happened to me sometime So I pushed my code to my Jenkins. Um, where is my Jenkins? It's happened. Yeah, of course I'm locked out. So this is the auto commit that I have. When I push a new code, it's just fire up the Jenkins. And you can see that it's done. And then it's going to do an auto deployed. Um, the auto deployed, let me see the game. So I'm coming back, I need to fix something in my config, sorry. So let's do rebuild to this one. And then it will begin the configuration of the AWS. Uh, okay, now you can see that I'm getting an info that I have two EC2s that was created. Here they are. Um, I'm just going to copy the load balancer and show you the load balancer address and show you that I have no instance in the load balancing, nothing at all. Um, the process of creating the, the instance can take something between 3 to 4 minutes. It's due to AWS issues until the cloud, until the EC2 is, is actually finishing the checks and, and it's okay so at that point on the video I will cut the, the white spaces but I'm going to show you another thing that's very important in the meanwhile so here is the EC2s so I'm just going to show you the, the tags when I creating a new EC2 I have three or maybe two special tags that I added one of them is called new and the other one is called version. The version is the short the short hash git and this thing we will see in in the website that this is the number and the new when I'm installing or when I'm deploying a new commit I want to make sure that I know which one is the new EC2s and which one is the old one and by using this kind of tag when I'm running the Ansible, I'm just telling him which tag to use when he's deploying deploy the new artifact. So this is very important and it's make my life very easy to use tags. Um, in the meanwhile we can see that it's already finished the 60 seconds that he had. I'm going to show a little bit the Python. Um, actually it's it's a simple it's I'm doing it in, in a class just for me to have it more organized. Uh, I'm using almost anything from both of three. Uh, I love the library. So here's the creation of the EC2s and the tags. The main issue here is that I'm using it for the way that I'm telling him how much EC2s to create is depend on the subnet that I'm using. So if I'm using one subnet, it will run only one time as I have a loop here. 
So because I'm going to do a multi AZ, or I want to make sure that each AZ has its own EC2 on it, so it's running three times. Um, you can change it. You can choose minimum and maximum, so it's meaning you can run on each AZ. I don't know, ten EC2s, whatever you want. It's very flexible. Um, so. It's like, I don't know, 300 lines of code, maybe less, but it's really nice and it's working. Um, so now we can see that we are still in the process of making it happen. Okay, now can we see that everything check and pass? And let's see what happened in my script. Okay, so now we fire up the ANSI bell, and you can see that we're finding the host, and here's the version that I talked about. Um, now we're installing the HTTP. And this can take some minutes to make it happen. In this process, I'm not using Ansible to enter to the ELB or something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm really like working with Boto because I'm, get, I'm getting um, more info what happened. So this is why I'm using Boto. Um, Ansible has can Ansible can do it as well, adding to adding to the to the ELB and make it an exit. And it's saying no EC2 instance listed on, on first run. It's, uh, it's not serving any host and client. But if we will go to the ELB now, we should see something else. So here is host. Here is the instance. And let's go to the website. And here is the hash git that we have. So at that point, we can see that we have four instance and I told you earlier that this is the git number 5D1955C and here is the git. So if I will go to my code and just, I don't know, add just add something and let's do an other commit so so now we have you see that we have a new git and all this process will start again i want to show you that what will happen that we will create a new ec2s and if you can make, if you can see here that I'm just going to be refreshing, you will see that the tag here is moved from new to done. So it's very important. And now you can see that we have a new fire up instance and job and Jenkins. And then here you can see that we have a new host creating new EC2s. The main thing that we want to see that there is, this is the new git and it's changed and this is the new, and, and the status was changed to new. So I'm just going to make just a quick look on the Ansible. It's very simple. It just, on the tag, is tag, tag status new. So I'm only reference, I'm only seeing the new instance. I don't care about the old one because Part of the continuous deployment, I'm, I'm, I don't care about the old one. From my point of view, they need to be illuminated, so no need for them. Uh, at that point, let's wait until this will be done. I came back now. Uh, I'm still on the second instance. You see that second run, sorry. You see still, you see that all okay. And a second danceable will 
fire up itself again. All right, so now it's beginning. I want to mention that I have a little script here. Okay, this script is just pinging the server and you will see that this is, I'm getting actually the same page. I just want to show you the process of connection draining, that meaning that I will not lose a connection to the site. In a second you will see that the, the git number is changing, actually the website is changing and and I, have, I, I it's like, it's really transparent for, for my side. I, don't have any clue. It can take about, you can set up the, the connection draining from 0 to 360 seconds, something like that. And you can see, you can notice that already the swap was changed. I was not even noticed that and everything is working fine. So the old DC2s now are going to be terminated and I'm using now the new connections and if I will go to the website you will, you will see that I have new git and the process of terminating the old one was not started yet but it will be starting in a moment just a second I'm not on the right page okay And it will begin in a moment. Okay. All right. Now he deleted and the job was finished. You can see that shutting down and it's going to be terminated. Um, and another thing that I want to say that uh, I'm using a tool called uh, Terraform from HashiCorp that is actually constructing all the infrastructure in the in in the in my cloud, meaning that um, the subnet, the VPC, everything is using by Terraform. Uh, I am encouraging you to read a little bit this tool. Uh, it's very nice. In any case, if you have any question for me, you want to know something and everything, you can just uh, contact me. I show you in the beginning of the of this page, uh, and here it's again. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it, and don't hesitate to contact me if you have a question. Uh, have a nice day. Bye bye.